Welcome to a shot of caffeine with David, the short burst of practical takeaway tips to grow the performance of your Shopify store. David Visser is our key account manager and growth strategist at Zyva. He's focused on lifting brand's digital strategy to increase conversion rates and ultimately drive ROI. From integrations, omnichannel solutions, and building a brand, David will share his insight over a morning cuppa. Hey, David. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. What number of coffee are you on this morning? Only number two. I was just about to ask you the same, actually. How many coffees are you deep? Only one, the one you made me earlier. Only one? Oh. I'm a two two coffees a day max. Oh, I was going to say we got to fix that, but um, it might be too early for that number two for you then. After this, we take a break. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Awesome. What are we talking about in today's episode of A Shot of Caffeine with David? So today we're going to talk about um, attributes in reviews. What is that? Yeah, I was going to ask you that <laughs> question. You looked at me puzzled when I said this is what we're going to talk about. So um, yeah, I, I think this is actually a really exciting thing. And I'm sure by the end of this episode, it will all make sense to you. So attributes are simply, it sounds really complicated eh, when you say it like that, but they're simply um, extra values that you can get about a customer as part of the review process. Now, there's two different types of those attributes. So you have product attributes and customer attributes. Now, I love skincare, right? Do you love skincare? Yes. I do. Okay, yeah. good. Not as much as you, though. <laughs> well, we're going to use skincare as an example because it's just... <laughs> as some context, David comes in and shares about his skincare routine and probably has a bigger skincare cabinet than any of us. I do. My wife has, I think, like one moisturizer and I've got definitely a whole stack of um, different products. You know, it's nice to layer them and <laughs> look after your skin. <laughs> well, it does work. Your, your skin glows. Uh, that's why I still look like I'm 21, right? <laughs> so let's use skincare as an example. Example. So basically, you can ask questions about the product. So, and, and the reason I pick an example is then, like, you can kind of get the gist of it. So, it might be that um, as the product attributes, you ask, like, "Hey, what do you think of the texture of this product? And what? How about the feel? Um, and it could be a sliding scale. It could be a number of words that they can select from. The second part then is customer attributes. So in there you could say like, okay, what's your age range and what are your skincare concerns? So you could say like, I don't know, I am a um, 21 to 25 year old and my skincare concerns are X, Y, and Z. Um, those information points are then captured on the customer um, in the actual review. So you can see those like, you know, customers can or other customers can see those. The real benefit, there's, there's two kind of key benefits of this. So one is um, that information you can now use because you can feed that back into Clavio mm -hmm. and you can now use that to target people. So like, let's say from this review that I've left, you now know that I am a 21 to 25 year old male um, that has, you know, let's say oily skin concerns. Um, and you can then take them down a journey where you talk about oily skin. So you, you can use that information within Clavio. The second beautiful thing about this is as you start collecting more and more and more and more and more reviews, like, you know, you, you think about it yourself. Let's say you're looking at a, a product and there is, you know, 10,000 reviews. Are you reading all of them? No, I usually look at the negative ones first. Yeah, that's that's one, that's one customer strategy, right? Mm -hmm. It's like they want to see the negative ones. The other way that you can really capture this and use this and make that journey easier for customers that are actually looking to buy um, is adding in filters. So with the filters, you can now go, okay, I am a 21 to 25-year-old male with oily skin um, and read reviews that are only left by 21 to 25-year-old males that have oily skin. So instead of like, you know, like, for me, for example, like I, I'm probably not that interested in reading reviews from 50 to 60 year old women with dry skin because that has nothing to do with me. So that okay. product isn't necessarily going to do what I want it to do. Um, and so from a customer point of view, you help them filter down their 10,000 reviews into stuff that's relevant to them. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, you're you're totally right. And that would mean that, you know, customers can have a more seamless buyer journey as well right exactly so and that's what you want to do right you want to make that journey as easy as possible for new customers to kind of figure out like what are people saying about this so it's a really easy way to capture more information um i think what's interesting is skincare is such a good example of mm -hmm. that um, but i think these attributes can actually really work in 
lots of different types of businesses and lots of different verticals. Um, you just have to really think about like what is the right questions to ask. Um, and it can be different for each product or each collection of products. So um, I think often like, again, like let's say I sell skincare, but I also sell supplements. Like that would be completely irrelevant to ask about like the feel and texture um, and my skincare concerns on a, you know, like let's say a supplement product or like let's say magnesium tablets so again you can ask different questions depending on the actual product yeah is there a magic number of questions that you can ask a customer like what is, is there data that shows you know if you ask five questions they go oh, too hard yeah like really good point under five ideally mm -hmm. is the um is the number that um our friends at um okendo have given us so they found that after that it becomes too kind of complicated um but i think customers are because it's also one of the kind of like oh well you know does it look too much like if i'm asking too many questions like is that too much i don't think so i think people are pretty used to kind of answering a few questions and um obviously with reviews you want to make sure there's some kind of reward for the customer for leaving this information with yes. you right like you want yeah. to incentivize them for leaving you a review and then as part of that you're capturing all this beautiful zero party data exactly which you can use in other flows as well yeah i guess my next question which you sort of alluded to with okendo is how would you actually use these attributes to capture that data in reviews um Look, to be honest, it's like one of those things. You just need to turn it on. You just need to think, like have a strategy for what you want to do, even if you start with only a couple um, that you use across the board. Um, but, you know, get it set up because the sooner you set it up, the sooner you start collecting this information, even if you're not using it to filter and kind of do those extra things still later on or create flows. Like it's one of those, you know, you've got to have something to do something, right? So the earlier you start capturing this data, you can always start a flow in six months on, you know, 21 to 25 year old males with oily skin. <laughs> yes, I guess not every product and service is, is adequate to have attributes anyway, right? Like some of them are the same, regardless of your skin type, age, or any sort of characteristics based on you. Yeah, but I've seen really good uses, like even like, let's say, um, like uh, Ecosa, for example, right, which is yeah. a brand that does that sells uh, mattresses, like yeah. they use it and they capture like, are you a side sleeper? Are you a back sleeper? Like, this is like, uh, these things yeah. that you can ask, and it will help you as well, because they help you understand, like, even even going back to the very roots of your business, understanding like product development, like, oh, what do we need to, what do we need to make next? Like, do we need to make, now that I've seen that 90% of my customers are back sleepers, is my product like suited for that? So yes. you can use that data in so many ways um, to, you know, keep bettering your product as well. That's awesome. Is there anything else you want to share about attributes? No, that's pretty much it. I think, you know, get this set up. Um, if you don't have that already, uh, most apps, most reviews apps have the functionality. Um, so definitely get it set up. And yeah, shout out to Akendo. I think they do this part um, quite well. So cool. Thanks, Evan. And as, as we said, we'll pop the links in the show notes. See you next time. Thanks. Thanks.